Hi, I'm Frank Coleman and I'm a drummer and I've been a drummer for a very long time. And there's a video that's been going around amongst uh, my drummer and musician friends about how to play in 13-8 time. And this guy sits down and he's about to play in 13-8 time and he goes, what do you do? Play in 13-8 time. Nobody can dance to 13-8 time. Play 4-4, four, four, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I have some sympathy for, for that point of view. Uh, because when I, a lot of times when I listen to music in odd meters or I hear music in odd meters, I kind of go, uh, yeah, great, show off, you know. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that, um, especially if you're um, an up and coming or learning musician, or just any at any point in your development, it's a good idea to be able to play in different time signatures, be able to play smoothly and musically in different time signatures in case you're ever called upon to do it. And you might be surprised at some of the popular songs that actually have as their underpinning a non-standard uh, time signature or perhaps a different way of looking at time within the song. Uh, I mean, uh, there are certain odd time signatures that I actually really enjoy playing as a drummer. Uh, some of some of this stuff, if it's not really handled properly, it gets to be kind of like what I call music for musicians. It's uh, I'm reminded of what Mark Twain said about Richard Wagner, his music is better than it sounds. Uh, so, uh, well, trying to resist the, the show-off-y aspects of this, let me show you like some approaches to trying to think about these things and, and make them more musical. Let's take 13-8 as the example because that's a really strange one and uh, it's the one that they demonstrated in the video. Well, all right, what is 13? Well, uh, 13 is uh, 12 plus 1. Uh, although if you count a one beat in, in music, it'll tend to sound like a skipping record or something like that. Um, so I would look at 13 as being uh, a pair of a, a pair of fours, a pair of two, two sets of four, that's eight. And then what have we got? Eight, we got nine, 10, 11, we got five left. So I would break that into, instead of four and one, I would break that into two and three. So I would count it like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three. And you can already see it sort of starts to have this sort of ebb and flow feeling just by my counting it that way. So if I were writing a song, uh, let's say in the verse, the protagonist is saying, well, I did this and I did that and then I ran into this problem and then I did this and I did that and then I ran into this problem. You can see that it sort of has that sort of contour to it. So sort of like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right? See, the idea is that you can throw in all kinds of little bits of regular beats inside this structure to make it feel more like it's just sort of flowing along like a regular beat. Yeah, it's to try to not emphasize the sharpness, the angles, the hard edges of these things, to try to make it sort of, you know, more flowing and more musical. Try to find, try to pull out the musicality and the, the, the um, whatever it is of the mood or the atmosphere that you're trying to create within these structures. You know, um, you know, Take Five is, of course, a very famous, uh, you know, uh, song. It's in 5-4 times. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. See, and it just kind of like bounces along. Do do da do do da ba ba one two three four five one two three four five But it's also another song that's in five that I think of is um, "America Is Waiting." It's the first song on "My Life in the Bush of Ghosts" by Brian Eno and David Byrne, and that is kind of more like stilted because it's it's a really kind of angular kind of song. It's one two three four five.
yeah, like that. Um, so uh, that's another. Also, see threes and twos, threes and fours, and sometimes you can have sort of like a macro structure of a of a three and underneath sense of four. I'm thinking of the song Tomorrow's World by Killing Joke. That's actually sort of it's it's a, the phrase is is in three, but underneath each one it's in four four. So it's. Da, 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 da. So, so you'd be surprised um, at how much odd meters and you know non-standard time signatures can filter into some of your favorite songs. Uh, let's see, uh, "Tattooed Love Boys" by The Pretenders. <laughs> It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. Five, six, seven, dun, 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 dun. Right? Um, yeah, so practicing this stuff and all, it's more important to just, like I say, just kind of go more for the aesthetics and the mood that you're trying to create and, and contour the music around that, around your message, rather than just doing this sort of, you know, uh, intellectual uh, exercise purely for its own sake. Uh, anyway, I'll play a little uh, seven eight, which is uh, one of my uh, one of my favorites. One two three four five six seven. One two three four five six seven. One two three four five six. Yeah, so is that when I was at Berkeley, uh, I used to, uh, when I was a snot nosed kid, I used to make people play in uh, 31 8 time, which is four bars of four minus an eighth note. So, right where you expect the phrase to turn around, it drops an eighth note, it feels like the bottom just fell out of everything, just to be a wise ass. So, that's, and again, I'm playing just like a regular beat inside it. It's just that when I get to that end, I just count seven instead of eight. So, it's four bars of four minus an eighth note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. obnoxious you know <laughs> so that's just to take things to a ridiculous extreme uh, I mean uh, the song I used to play a lot when I was at uh, Berkeley uh, uh, was uh, Scatterbrain by Jeff Beck which is alternating seven and nine which gee let's do the math seven plus nine comes to two bars of four basically it's uh, Etc. 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 Anyway, so there you go. Odd meters. You know. Uh, you know. It's it's good for you to stretch your mind and all like that. Uh, but uh, never sacrifice the musicality for the um, for the intellectual exercise. Because otherwise, you're just playing music for musicians. That's it. <laughs>